Steven Spielberg's adaptation of Ready Player One and the myriad Easter eggs therein has finally hit theaters. Fans of the book should be delighted with how the Oasis is realized, but as with any adaptation, some facets of Ernest Cline's world are significantly changed in the jump to the big screen. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Jorgensen, and these are the five biggest changes that the Ready Player One movie makes to the source material. Full spoilers for both the book and the movie follow. While all three of Oasis creator James Halliday's hidden keys are necessary to unlock his Easter egg, the novel actually features even more obstacles for Parzival and the Legions of Gunters to overcome. The book's hunt required Gunters find a key, follow the clue included with that key to a matching gate, use that key to enter the gate and complete a challenge of some kind, and repeat twice. That'd be a lot to get through in 2 hours and 15 minutes, so the filmmakers smartly choose to eliminate the gates from the equation altogether. The movie created a giant monster-plagued racetrack and a ticking clock hunt through the Shining's Overlook Hotel unique to this version of the story. These new challenges are visual feasts, and probably more cinematic than watching a D&D character play Joust would have been. One of the most memorable aspects of the book left out of Spielberg's Ready Player One are flick sinks. These standalone simulations drop users into a movie and make them play through it as the protagonist, requiring them to perform all of their dialogue and actions on cue. In the novel, the Copper and Crystal Gates force players to play through War Games and Monty Python and the Holy Grail, respectively. These are enormously fun passages which seemed ripe for inclusion here, but were likely left out due to the visual effects wizardry that would have been required to believably skin Parzival as Matthew Broderick or the members of Monty Python for these scenes. Critics of Ernest Cline's novel often point to the thin writing of Samantha Cook, Artemis in the Oasis, as little more than a nerd fantasy for Wade to drool over. As a huge fan of the book myself, I can't really say I disagree with that. Wade literally admits to having cyber-stalked her in one of their early meetings, and after they quote, break up, side note they hadn't been dating, he resumes that creepy behavior. Klein, along with his co-writer on the script, Zach Penn, must have taken that criticism to heart, as the relationship between the movie's leads is far more even-handed here. Don't get me wrong, this movie doesn't ace the Bechdel test, but if you were one of the many that found yourself cringing at how Artemis was treated in the novel, you'll find the movie's handling of her character much more palatable. That whole underground resistance working to topple the all-powerful, innovative online industries in the movie? Yeah, that's nowhere in the book. True, there are Gunter clans devoted to hunting IOI Sixers inside the Oasis, but there's no mention of any real-world groups fighting against IOI. The basis for the Resistance's inclusion in the movie probably spins out of Novel Wade's moves against the company, where he infiltrates their headquarters in order to sabotage the shield they conjure to block the entrance to Anorak's castle in the Crystal Gate inside the Oasis. This plot point is loosely adapted, but features Samantha as the one who has to bring the shield down. While the Resistance subplot ends up being less engaging than the main Hunt story, it does give Wade and Samantha the chance to meet in real life much earlier than they do in the book, where they don't meet face to face until the very End. Parzival, Artemis, H, Daito, and Sho form the High Five, the first Oasis users to place on the Hunt scoreboard. At the end of both the book and the movie, Parzival decides to split his newly acquired controlling stake in gregarious gaming systems, and by extension the Oasis, with his fellow High Five members. But in the book, not all of his friends make it to the finish line. The novel sees Daito, real name Toshiro Yoshiaki, murdered on the orders of IOI boss Nolan Sorrento in a desperate attempt to slow the High Five's progress. While Sorrento sure does try to kill the High Five in the movie, the filmmakers decided to let Daito enjoy a happy ending with his friends, and also billions of dollars. What were your favorite, or least favorite, changes the Ready Player One movie made to the source material? Let us know in the comments, and for more on Ready Player One, be sure to check out our review of the movie, as well as watch the cast play a good old-fashioned round of I Understood That Reference. And don't forget to like and subscribe to IGN everywhere you like to watch.